Good evening, everyone. We are going to start a session in number two of this week, number three. So we are going to continue with the topic that we were developing yesterday. And now we are going to um, learn about the superlative adjectives, and then we are going to know how to create um, this comparative and superlative adjectives. Uh, like making a list of those adjectives that we are going to use for making comparison or uh, talking about something that is uh, superlative making a list of things. So we are going to start with uh, the topic and the development of the, uh, the information that we have. So yesterday we were talking about the uh, comparison or the comparative adjectives in which we were um, learning the structures that we can use to create sentences uh, using the comparative adjectives. And also we were talking about some uh, extra information or another use that we can uh, give to the uh, comparison adjectives. So now we are going to start with the superlative adjectives. In this case, we just have the general information for uh, that part. So now we are going to end the information for the superlative adjectives, and then we are going to create the list of words um, using the specific endings uh, to talk about the superlative or the comparative adjectives. And also we are going to uh, learn about the different categories of the adjectives that we are going to use in this specific topic. Así que vamos a ir comenzando, vamos a continuar con la parte del superlativo. Vamos a eh, terminar de escribir las especificaciones de el, eh, los adjetivos superlativos. Después vamos a crear la lista de eh, palabras o ejemplos de cómo podemos nosotros crear adjetivos eh, para hacer comparación y el adjetivo que vamos a utilizar para el superlativo. So, in, this, in that case, we are going to have a list of examples. And then, vamos a, eh, vamos a, a poner las, las categorías de los adjetivos, eh, because this is not like for all the words, we are going to use the same thing. So, in this case, we are going to explain the difference between one syllable adjective, two syllable adjective, eh, two or more syllables. So in that case, we are going to divide it into categories. So we are going to start right now with the information that we have. So we have here the document in which we were working, uh, the topic of the comparative and superlative adjective. And we are going to see the information that we need to know how to create a sentences with superlative adjectives. So give me a moment. Okay, we were saying that the superlative adjectives are used to compare three or more things. They help to describe things on either end of a spectrum, the smallest, largest, tallest, and shortest. So we are going to continue for this um, part to explain all the things that we need to use in the superlative sentences. So now we are going to write the formula for this uh, adjective. So we have noun, that is the subject, plus the verb. In this case, we're not going to use like in the other um, structure that we have for the comparative ones. <clears throat> In that case, we are going to use the subject, the, uh, the verb, 
And then we use the comparative adjective. In this case, we are going to use the noun, that is the subject, plus the verb. And in this case, we are going to add the, this one. And then we are going to use superlative adjective. Plus the second noun that is the object. Para las oraciones superlativas, esta es la fórmula que podemos utilizar, donde tenemos el primer nombre, que es el sujeto, el verbo, vamos a utilizar el artículo, ¿verdad? Da, y vamos a poner el adjetivo superlativo con el segundo nombre, que es el objeto. En este caso, al utilizar da, nos está demostrando que no hay nadie que se le compare. Por ejemplo, we have here my English professor is the smartest. Person. My English professor is the smartest person. Nos dice, mi profesor de inglés es la persona más inteligente. En este caso, el, la persona que dice la oración no encuentra a alguien que se le compare. Entonces, por eso usa que es la persona más inteligente, el más inteligente. Just like comparative adjectives, the object of comparison can sometimes be left out. In the case that we were talking about when we give the context or we give uh, information before the, um, the comparative, uh, we are not going to use the other noun that is the object. It's the same for these cases, but we are going to see how to create it. Tenemos también ejemplos parecidos al de, el, eh, al de la primera parte, donde decíamos que si ya habíamos dado información acerca de, eh, del objeto, en este caso del objeto que vamos a utilizar para nuestra oración, no es necesario que lo agreguemos, siempre lo podemos omitir. So we are going to see how to create this kind of sentences in a superlative uh, part. So it says, we have the example. And we have here, and it says, we took an exam in class today. And I, for the highest so we are saying we took an exam in class today in class today and i scored the highest so we also examine hoy y mi puntuación fue la más alta de quién es de los compañeros del salón so in that case we can add, if we have the last part of the sentence, we can add in and the class. For example, I score the highest in the class. In that case, we are going to use that, um, that part. But in that case, we are talking about that we had an exam. So in that case, we know that this person is with uh, his or her uh, classmate, so in that case, it's not necessary to add the extra information because we have uh, previous knowledge about the situation. We took an exam in class today, and I scored the highest of the group, of the class, or in the class. So in that case, it's not necessary to add that information after the uh, sentence ends. 
Siempre y cuando nosotros agreguemos esta información antes de utilizar los superlativos o los comparativos, no es necesario que le agreguemos nada más, porque ya estamos entendiendo el contexto del que queremos hablar en nuestra oración. Si nosotros no agregamos información extra antes de nuestra oración, sí podemos agregarle eh, los finales. Pero en muchos de los casos, si ya vimos la información, no es necesario que la volvamos a repetir. So now we are going to talk about how to create comparative and superlative adjectives. And it says, changing an adjective into its comparative or superlative form depends on the number of syllables in the base form of the adjective. So in this case, we are going to talk about the number of syllables that a word has. Para crear los comparativos y los superlativos, no vamos a basar en las sílabas que tienen las palabras, porque vamos a tener un par de categorías por ahí, eh, dependiendo del número de sílabas. So we are going to know how to create that kind of adjective depending on the syllable of the words that we have. So it says that it depends on the number of syllables. So in this case, we have the base form for the adjective, and then we're going to see how many syllables uh, that word has, and uh, how long is that word also. So we have the first one that is one syllable adjective. And it says the suffix er will be on for a comparative adjective. And EST. or superlative adjective. We are going to take the base form of the adjective and then we are going to write the ending. And we have two. One, for the comparative uh, adjective, we have ER. And for the comparative adjective, we have EST. Así que para crearlos vamos a tomar en los eh, adjetivos de una sílaba, vamos a tomar ER y lo vamos a escribir al final del adjetivo. Y para los eh, superlativos, al final del adjetivo le vamos a agregar ESC para crear estos eh, adjetivos comparativos y superlativos. And it says, when the adjective has a single vowel between two consonants, the second consonant be, will be double. When the adjective has a 
single vowel between two consonants, the second consonant will be double. Cuando encontremos adjetivos que eh, tienen una sola vocal entre dos consonantes, vamos a doblar la segunda consonante y agregar el final que le corresponde. So we are going to have an example for this information in which we are saying when we have a one syllable adjectives that are the uh, very, very short uh, words. Um, in that case, when we have just one vowel between two consonants, we are going to double the second consonant and we are going to add the ending. So we are going to see the examples of a comparative adjective with a single vowel between the, the two consonants. And we have the adjective hot. We see here that we have consonant, consonant vowel, And consonant again. So in that case, we have a single uh, or a one syllable adjective with a single vowel. So we have the separation for this that we have H, that is the consonant. Then we have O, that is the vowel. And then we have the other consonant, that is T. And we are going to see the form. So it says that we take the adjective that is hot and we are going to double, we are going to write twice the same consonant. In this case, the second consonant is T. So I'm going to write again the T, double T, and then I'm going to write E-R, hotter. That is the construction for the comparative adjective eh, doubling the second consonant. Así es como nos van a ir quedando, ¿verdad? Los adjetivos cuando les doblamos la consonante, la segunda consonante, y le agregamos el suffix que le corresponde a cada uno de ellos. Como en este caso estamos haciendo ahora, eh, adjetivos comparativos, vamos a dejarlos de esta forma, pero estos solo son los one syllable words. Estos solo son los de una sílaba. We are going to see the other examples of the other categories that we have for this topic. And we have an example of a sentence using the adjective. And it says,
So it says that the temperature is hotter today than yesterday. And here in my, uh, we can say my place or in the uh, city that I am living, uh, this is the best sentence for the situation that we are having. Today was hotter than yesterday. So in that case, we have the sentence because we are comparing two days, two different situations yesterday and today. So we have our uh, sentence. So now I'm going to create a table, a, a short table in which we are going to see the adjective, that is the base form of the adjective, the comparative adjective, and the superlative adjective. So we are going to have some examples of words and how um, they look when we add the topic. So we are going to to add a table. We have three spaces and a six like this. So we have here the adjective, then we have the comparative and the superlative. So we have here, and I'm going to write the adjectives and then we are going to create the comparative and superlative. So we have past. Cheap, fresh, be, and sad. So we have fast, cheap, fresh, big, and sad. Those are the adjectives that we are going to use for the example. So in the first one, we are going to create again, or we are going to write again. Fast. In this case, it is not necessary to double anything because in that case, we don't have the vowel between two consonants. In that case, we have three consonants. So in this case, we are just going to add E R faster, faster. Then we have cheap. Again, we are not going to double anything. Cheap. And we add the on cheaper. Then we have fresh, adding the on fresher. Here, in this case, we are going to double V, and we are going to write G, E, R, bigger. And again, that, G, E R, father. Así que tenemos algunas, ¿verdad? Que no necesitamos doblarle la consonante. En estos casos solo agregamos la E R. Pero en los otros que sí llevan la consona, las dos consonantes y la vocal, sí lo vamos a doblar y le vamos a poner dos veces la segunda consonante con el E R. Now we are going to write the superlative form. In this case, again, a pass. But in this case, we are going to add EST. Faster. Then we have chip S. Precious. Vigus. And status. So in that case, we have here the examples of how to write the uh, one syllable adjective using the double consonant or not. Now we have two 
सी लवो आज से In this case, we are talking about that uh, we are going to use adjectives that are kind of mm, longer than the one syllable adjective. And it says for comparative adjectives, the suffix er will be as or it will be preceded by more. For a superlative adjective, the suffix est will be as or it will, it will be preceded by must. Um, in some cases, we are going to use both forms, but one will be more common when in that use more or must instead of a suffix. For adjectives ending in Y, the Y will become an A, and the appropriate suffix will be an. In este caso, cuando ya tenemos um, palabras un poco más largas o two syllable adjectives, vamos a agregar para eh, most, para los eh, comparative adjectives, vamos a utilizar la palabra more y para los superlative most. Eh, y aquellos adjetivos que terminen en y va a cambiar a una y y se le va a agregar el sufijo adecuado según el caso. So we have here the whole information about the two syllable adjectives, and we are going to mark the most important part um, that we are going to follow. There are like um, 
kind of rules, but in this case, it's just to follow the structure. So in this case, we have that we are going to use this one for the comparative one, that is the suffix er, or it will be preceded by more. We are going to use more in that case. So I'm going to mark in yellow. And for superlative adjectives, the suffix est will be add or it will be preceded by more. And then with the adjectives that ending in y, we are going to change it and then we are going to add the correct suffix that we are going to use. Así que ahí tenemos la información, ¿verdad? Para los adjetivos comparativos, vamos a agregar ER, ER, o le vamos a poner MORE cuando la palabra es muy larga. Y si es superlativo, obviamente le vamos a agregar ESC, pero le vamos a agregar cuando son palabras muy largas, le vamos a agregar MOST. Y los adjetivos que terminen en Y, Les vamos a cambiar por una I y le vamos a agregar el sufijo que le corresponde. So we are going to see here the example of that information. So we have here the adjective. Then we have the comparative and the superlative. So we have here the following adjectives. We have gentle, clumsy, Then we have happy, anxious, and polite. So those are the adjectives that we are going to use. We have a gentle, clumsy, happy, anxious, and polite. So for the second one, that is the comparative. For gentle, in that case, we are not going to double anything and we are not going to use a more. In that case, we are just going to end the topic. Gentle. Then we have classic. In this case, we are going to change the last letter that is Y. Plum, and we change. Clumster. Then again, we're going to change Ha here. And here, in, in the case that we have anxious, we are going to add the word more. So in that case, we're not going to change anything of the word because in that case, we're just going to add more. And in the last one, again, more polite. Ahí tenemos, ¿verdad? Con los comparativos vamos a utilizar el more con palabras que son un poco más largas. Y también ya vemos cómo hacemos el cambio de la Y a la I para agregarle el sufijo. Then for the superlative, we have gentle, here, clumsy, happy, most anxious. And most polite. 
So in that case, that is the construction or the examples that we have for um, these adjectives. So remember that when you are going to use a phrases a, with comparative adjectives, you are going to use more. And when you are using a, the superlative adjective, you are going to use more. So now we are going to see the uh, category number three, that is the last uh, category that we have here for the adjective. And in this case, it's talking about the three, um, the three syllable adjectives or long words, very, very long words. So in this case, um, when we have this kind of long words, uh, we are not going to use the suffix. In this case, we are going to use a more and a more because we are not going to change um, the form of the adjective. In this case, we are just going to add the words to demonstrate what kind of adjectives are, uh, we are using when we are creating sentence. So in that case, you're not going to change the adjective. In that case, you're just going to add more and more. So we have here the adjective. Then we have the comparative and the superlative. And we have a few examples. Important, attractive, and then embarrassed. So in the comparative one, we know that we are going to use the word more, more important, and for the superlative, we are going to use most. So in that case, we are just going to use the words more and more. Así que cuando tenemos eh, adjetivos de, de tres sílabas o demás, que son palabras bastante largas, solo vamos a utilizar el more para los comparativos y el more para los superlativos. No le vamos a agregar los sufijos a nuestras palabras porque ya el more y el more nos está diciendo cómo lo estamos utilizando. And obviously we have some exceptions in, as 
in the rules that we have, uh, we also have some exceptions. And in this case, it's saying that um, there are several rules for writing in English. These rules all often have irregularities and exceptions. Sometimes the deviants follow a pattern that makes them easy to spot, but this is not the case for comparative and superlative adjectives. Abnormal adjectives simply have to be committed to memory. And we have the irregular adjectives. Adjectives are irregular when their comparative and superlative forms do not adhere to the rules discussed in this topic. Hay un eh, cambio en ciertos adjetivos, que son los adjetivos irregulares, que no se adhieren a lo que ya explicamos, que el ending, que el topic, que el more o el most, sino que ellos cambian su forma, así como lo hacen algunos verbos, ¿verdad? Los verbos irregulares que cambian su forma. En este caso, los adjetivos también cambian su forma. So we are going to see the irregular adjectives. So we have here the adjective. Then we have the comparative. And then the superlative. So we are going to write just the adjective. Good. Bad. Little. Much. And hard. So how can we uh, say the word good in a comparative sentence? In that case, we're going to see or to say better. Better, and in superlative is best. Then we have bad, that in comparative is worse. And in superlative is worse. And a little less. Least, more, most. And the last one, further or further. And it's the same for this one. Just uh, we change the ending. Teacher, tell me. Uh, how is the translation, for example, more polite and most polite? What else the difference? Okay, in that case, when you are using more polite, you are saying that, for example, we are going to write here the example. One is more polite than Francisco. And we have the other example. Juan is, I mean, Juan is the most polite boy, for example. Tenemos oh. dos ejemplos. Y dice en el primero, Juan is more polite than Francisco. Juan es más Amable que Francisco. Estamos haciendo una comparación de dos. Okay. Y en el segundo, Juan es el más, es el más respetuoso, el más agradable, el más. No hay nadie que se compare a él. Entonces, cuando usamos more, es para compararlo con otros. Pero recuerden, solo lo utilizamos con dos. Y el segundo, el most polite, es para decir que en una lista de personas, por ejemplo, aquí lo podemos decir, digamos, is the most polite student. Es el, 
estudiante más respetuoso, podemos decir, de la sección, del colegio, de la universidad, entre muchos, él es el más. Así que en ese caso, more es para una comparación entre dos y most para una comparación entre varios. Ok. Ok. So, here we are the irregulars. Aquí tenemos los irregulares que no siguen los mismos eh, reglamentos. La mayoría de adjetivos sí van a seguir la regla del superlativo y del eh, comparativo con el, el, el final que tenemos acá. That is this one. The ER. Muchos van a seguir ese, ese, esa estructura. La ER al final. Y muchos van a seguir el ESP. Otros van a seguir el MOE y el MOS, pero los irregulares no. Porque si se fijan, cambian su forma. Y ya no podemos utilizar las mismas reglas con ellos. Pero solo en este caso es que los vamos a utilizar. Cuando son irregulares, que son estos ejemplos que tenemos acá, que cambian su forma y su estructura. So, in that case, I think if... I don't know if you have some questions or you need, uh, in some cases, you need to clarify some information. Si tienen alguna duda o quieren aclarar o quieren reforzar alguna idea de lo que ya hablamos de los adjetivos, ese es el momento para que pregunten sobre los adjetivos comparativos y superlativos. We are clear as, as a crystal. We are clear as a water. We're, we don't have any questions. Okay, we're going to have a little, little, little um, activity in which we're going to have 10 sentences. And you are going to tell me what is the best option or what is the correct option for the adjective that we are going to have in the sentence. Así que voy a escribir 10 oraciones donde ustedes van a eh, decir cuál es la versión correcta del adjetivo. And then we are going to see some examples of uh, this adjective because it's uh, the last one. Is the last part for the topic. So we are going to see the activity. We have number one and it says the four. So listen. In Dubai is the I am in that's not the way
Okay, we have here the 10 uh, sentence and we are going to read it and then you are going to have some minutes to um, find the answers. That is kind of simple because uh, you need to follow the um, the clues that we have for the information that we were uh, learning about the attitude or the compar comparison adjective and the superlative attitude. So, we have the number one, the Burj Khalifa building in Dubai is the building in the world. Labrador's are San Chihuahuas. We deal rockets in Sysic class today. Mine flew the high. My necklace is expensive than my bracelet. I got a C on my essay, which is bad than the 100% I got the last time. Homework is important than watching television. Watching television makes me happy than doing homework. To save money, I am searching for the cheap textbook. My grandmother's chocolate chip cookies are the good. Driving on a dirt road is bumpy than driving on asphalt. So, we are going to have some minutes because we are going to end uh, the session very soon to think about the answer and then we are going to write the correct answer for those uh, sentences. So, now you're going to have a couple of minutes to think about the answer. Así que vamos a pensar en la, en la respuesta de estas oraciones. ¿Cuál es el adjetivo o cuál es la forma correcta del adjetivo que necesitamos para completar la oración? Así que vamos a tener un par de minutos para pensar en la respuesta y ya vamos a escribir la respuesta. ¿Correcto? Of just one minute more. For the first one, what is the answer? Para la primera, ¿cuál es la respuesta correcta? Talent. Good. Talent. 
Good. All that. Number two. Bigger teacher. Good, bigger. Number three. Highest. Good. Number four. More expensive. More expensive. Good. Number five. Worse. Mm -hmm. Worse. Number six. More important. Good. More important. Number seven. Happiest. Good, happier, happier. Number eight. Cheaper. In this case, cheaper. Textbook. Number nine. Best. Best. The best. best. The best. Best. The best. And the last one. In this case, it's the bumpier. Bumpier like this. Okay. We are going to end the session here. We are going to uh, see each other tomorrow and I will add a list of adjectives to this document. So when you can uh, enter the link, you will find the list of adjectives with the comparative and superlative form. So we are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.